What's up, fine people? I want to lecture for a while about perspective and controls, and this video is going to be dedicated to G Money Mozart because even though he denies being Jewish and he doesn't understand first person perspective, he's still okay in my book. In first person games, when you hit left, your avatar goes to the left. When you hit right, your avatar goes to the right. When you're uh, holding forward and you move your mouse to the left, your avatar goes to the left. When you move your mouse to the right, the avatar goes to the right. That's full control. You know exactly where you're going to be going at all times. It doesn't ever switch up on you. It feels really good. Player control is probably the most important thing in a game, at least for me. I know some people probably think graphics are, or cinematics, story, just people looking to watch a movie on a, in a video game form for some reason. That's not me. I prefer games, and games benefit greatly from having strong player control. In some superior third-person games, you also have full control over the avatar. When you hit back, your avatar goes back. When you hit forward, your avatar goes forward. When you hit to the right, turns to the right, goes to the right. 100% of the time, I have full control over this avatar. I know exactly what it's going to do. Because the inputs do exactly what they say they're going to do. You can go back. You can go to the left. You can go to the right, go to the left, go back, go forward. It's 100% of the time, no matter where the camera is, I can spin the camera around. I still know, go right, go forward, go backward, doesn't matter where the camera is. Forward, to the right, forward, to the right, it doesn't matter. Camera can spin around all it wants. I know the avatar is going forward while I hold forward. It's going to go to the right when I hit to the right. 100% of the time, I have control over the avatar. In some other third person games, you have partial control where if you hit to the right, it turns right. Hit to left, turns left. But at a certain point, it's just running forward while I'm holding to the left or while I'm holding to the right. So you don't have full control because it's based on the camera's position instead of the avatar. And while uh, it can certainly be effective, Damn. Stop him. it's not quite the same as having full control. Oh, Lord, Fisher, have you gone mad? So while I can hold to the left and it'll turn to the left and I'll hold to the right and it turns to the right, it's not always the case, because if I'm facing too far, when I hold to the right, it turns left, and vice versa. But when I hold down, it turns to the right, and when I hold up, it turns to the left. It's not full control. It doesn't feel as good. I'm not able to make the avatar do exactly what I want it to do. <coughs> Similar to a first-person game, it allows you to turn using the mouse. It doesn't have quite the same feeling, because if you turn quickly, it loses it, you snap off into a different direction. But if you go smoothly and slowly enough, you can have some control. Chaos Theory allows you to turn left with the mouse, turn right with the mouse, just by holding the forward, much like a first person game. But it doesn't have the same movements with the keys, even though these are the same angles that work in the first Splinter Cell. It's a lot more consistent, you have more control, it feels better. Chaos Theory is even worse than the original Splinter Cell, because as you can see, if I hit left, okay, he turns left, hit right, he turns right, hit left, oh, he turned right, oh, he turned left when I hit right. It's just not the same level of control that you have Fisher, in this first one or so. Uh, the memories. Yeah. Then there are worse games still. In these games, you tap to the left and she turns to the right. Tap to the right, turns to the right. Tap to the left, turns to the right. There's no fine control anymore. I can't tap and have it turn to the right a bit and stop. It's just all or nothing. You're either looking this way, or you're looking this way. You're looking this way, or you're looking this way. Or you can do the, uh, 
combination of the two, but that's it. Got eight degrees instead of having the fine tuning of being able to turn a little bit, turn a little bit, turn a little bit. Really eliminates a lot of the player control. And while uh, for the most part, you can probably still control the avatar, make it run around circles and stuff. Start to move the camera and it starts to lose that ability. You know, it's harder to control when you're trying to look around. I'm now taking some wide turns when I'm doing the same inputs. You really lose a lot of the control that you have. So if you're looking for someone behind you, you hear a noise and you uh, what? better be very quick and uh, accurate with your controls. But uh, unless you're a robot, you're not going to have 100% accuracy. You simply can't control the avatar as much as you could in the first Tomb Raider game. Now in games like the first Tomb Raider, superior games with superior controls, it doesn't really matter how fast you move the camera. You always have full control over your avatar. Whereas in this game, in games like it, you don't have full control. So if you're spinning the camera fast enough, you there's no way a human's going to be able to keep up with it. Let me try to run towards this truck, and I'm going to rotate the camera. And I'm already going the opposite way, because it's terrible. You just don't have the control, and it doesn't feel good. Now I know people who prefer third-person games tend to do so because they like looking at the avatar and looking at the clothing which is a very feminine thing in my opinion. A man dresses for the sake of society more than to look at himself all the time. But hey, if you're into that feminine stuff, it's your own thing. One thing third person games do to compensate for the lack of control is when you ADS, it's based on where the camera's pointed, instantly snapping to a completely different angle than where the avatar is. So it's kind of weird that these people who enjoy staring at their avatar all the time aren't taken back by stuff such as that. When you're aiming, your avatar just completely teleports to a different location. I find that very jarring and uh, distracting. Third person games also tend to have these weird uh, animations. It doesn't look very good when you're moving the camera. This time I'll run away from the truck. But when I'm moving the camera, it's like she keeps taking these weird turns. That looks horrible in my opinion. So I don't really see why people enjoy watching the avatar when it looks really silly when you're moving the camera. I'll keep the camera still. It's like you're doing this. <laughs> it doesn't look good to me. I guess it's your own preference to ignore that sort of silly stuff when looking at a gun is too much for you. Or not even having a gun like the first Ghost Recon, which looks Sorry. awesome in my opinion. I could use some food. In some games, turning with the mouse doesn't feel quite as smooth. Feels a bit choppy. And then obviously if you turn too fast, you have that same problem. Completely losing control of the avatar. So if one of the main purposes of having third person is that you get to see around your avatar while moving gets disrupted, I'd like to see some people go through some sort of obstacle course while needing to look at other things just to see how good they are with the switching the inputs based on the camera, especially because I'm assuming it's probably different in many games. Some games you can turn this far before the camera will swap, some games can only turn half that much before the camera swaps your movement. And then there are games that are even worse than Rise of the Tomb Raider and the modern Tomb Raider games, because they try to focus on animations and causes stuff such as this, where you're stuck in this weird animation, and you're like, oh wait, no, I was actually trying to go this way, and it takes another five seconds to turn around. <laughs> you have no control over your avatar. It feels absolutely awful. And in these really crappy third-person games, you can't even control your avatar if you use the multiple inputs and the camera. If I want to get Sam to face this, the only way to do it is by the aiming, because if I try to just make him look, it takes a lot of weird turns and it's like, okay. It's all based on the camera. And even then, I mean, I was aiming right at it, but he's not looking right at it. And these third person games tend to also have all these cheats. I mean, obviously you can see around the uh, walls and over the walls, that sort of thing. But most of them tend to have more cheats, such as being able to shoot through walls. So you end up having all these immersion breaking things like shooting through walls and snapping to shots, which just 
looks absolutely awful. So not only do you have the worst control, you know, it ends up looking bad, which is the thing these people seem to love so much. I can't see through my silhouette. You also have these horrible views where your avatar is taking up the whole screen. Blocking the enemies like this. I'm like, oh, what am I shooting at there? It's so bad. And that's why third person games end up having first person in them. Whereas third per or first person games don't really throw third person in it. The only reason they throw third person and first person games is when they're trying to sell it to more people. The reason they have first person and third person games is because they're trying to make it usable. So when you want to have control over your avatar, you end up having to do this ADS, which brings you into a first person control mode. Because first person is the superior view. So developers absolutely need to start putting the option for supposed tank controls. But really, it's just avatar based controls. It's actual control over your avatar. When you hit right, it turns to the right. When you hit left, it turns to the left. You can hit a strafe key to strafe to the right, to strafe to the left. When you hit forward, it moves forward. When you hit backward, it moves backward. There needs to be an option in third person games because I find them quite unplayable. Otherwise, I mean, obviously it's not unplayable. It's just feels so inferior to the first person or good third person games and I'm just not that into watching what's happening. I'd rather be inside of the avatar doing everything instead of watching it as this guy takes up half my screen. <laughs> no thanks, I'll take the gun. Now obviously having options is the best thing if you can have first person and third person then that's going to be ideal. Gotcha. And having the option for the supposed tank controls, but also having the modern controls in which it's based on your camera's position instead of the avatar's position, that would be a good option as well. Another option I thought about having is to have the tank controls in first person, and I think it would be very cool for when you're using free look. So aside from being able to use it in free look so that you can have turning capabilities instead of only having strafing capabilities, there are also games that have free look or free aim, which allows you to move the gun without actually moving the camera, which I think feels very great. It's an option that's needed in a lot of games, especially if they give you the option to adjust how far you can aim before the camera starts moving. Having the so-called tank controls, the avatar base controls, which I think is a better name because you can abbreviate it to AB, and then you have CB for camera based, which is the opposite, and AB makes more sense because that's how you recite the alphabet, it's AB, and then CB is backward because having the movement based on the camera is backward. With the free aim, if you were to have it so that you can go all the way, aim up all the way to the top of the screen, or whatever, you aim to, you know, a few inches away from the edges of the screen before your avatar starts turning, then you can really use those turn keys to help you out. And you'll have this really cool feeling that's uh, a lot more human-like than not having free aim where everywhere you move or everywhere you aim, your body turns. Instead of having that, you can actually just have it so you're gun turns while your body remains mostly stationary, you know. You have some turning in your torso and your arms, but that's about it. So the A-B controls really help at that point. So there's probably a bunch of things that I was intending to say. Well, not a bunch, but I know there's at least one thing I was intending to say, but I forgot. But I suppose the main point of the video is to acknowledge that first person is indeed superior. However, third person can be made better than it is by having the AB controls instead of the CB controls. At the very least, it should be an option. And if it were an option, I would certainly be much more willing to play third-person games because you have a lot more control over the avatar. Suddenly, it's not just first-person games where I can always get into the right slot. If you try doing this in a third-person game where you're you know, going in and out of different zones, 
it's really not as easy. You don't have that sort of control. I mean, it's going to also depend on the particular game, but... You just don't have the control in third person as you do in first person. And if your name just happens to be G Money Mozart, not saying such a person actually exists go subscribe but if that happens to be your name you can now have a better understanding of why exactly you're objectively wrong in saying that third person is superior so if you want to watch a movie just watch a movie and stop getting the developers to ruin games for the sake of you who doesn't even enjoy playing video games you just want to stare at your avatar I just have to say, it's real game, my name.